for the first uh, nominee for today's screening has mounted the podium. Tayo allows of Dora. The Senate is set to commence the screening for today and he is the first nominee to mount the podium. Distinguished Senator Tayo Alashadura, a senator who served with us in the Air Senate, former chairman of Senate Committee on Petroleum Upstream. No, 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 no. And is the nominee from Ondo State, uh, distinguished Senator Elijah Dura, on behalf of my colleagues, I welcome you to the Senate. And this screening provides an opportunity for you to give us uh, highlights on your bio data, if you wish to, or if there is anything that you have not included in the CV, but you think it's important for this Senate to know, you can do so. And uh, the Senate is ready for you to make your presentation. You are welcome. Point of order, Senator Bamidele Opeemi. Mr. President, sitting as chairman, distinguished colleagues, I come under both order 15 and order 43. Mr. Chairman, as you know, and as my distinguished colleagues know, I will never be frivolous in raising this point of order. The mid-order 15, matter of privilege and order 43, personal explanation. Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues, the media have been awash since yesterday over an explanation on which the general public deserve and they need a simple explanation. It has to do with our tradition of asking former legislators to take a bow and leave. Mr. Chairman, why this is important is that members of public need to be told that they need to understand that former senators, former House of Rest members, former state house of former legislators are subjected. Mr. Chairman, this is important. They are so, Mr. Chairman, they need to know that former legislators who served in the National Assembly are subjected to the same level of screening. What we have done since yesterday was to screen. Nobody has been confirmed, Mr. Chairman. They will submit, they will submit their credentials like every other person. After listening to them, the city senators also go back to study those credentials. The essence of this is not for us to establish that they are who they claim to be in their documentation. And, Mr. Chairman, it is important that we emphasize to members about the only reason why members are asked to take a bow and go is because the questions we have been asking them to clarify certain things are things that we already know. The Constitution of Nigeria is very clear as to qualification for appointment as a minister you must be qualified to serve as a member of the House of Representatives. And all of us are aware of the qualifications. So if people had been through this and they had had the opportunity to serve in the National Assembly, it is taken for granted. However, that does not prevent the Senate from still scrutinizing the documents that they have submitted, like the documents submitted by every other nominee. I just felt members of public I mean, should be told in clear terms as we commence the business of the day. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. I don't think there is going to be any debate on this. It's very clear. This, this issue is very clear. The, the Senate uh, has this tradition, and the tradition is that members of the National Assembly who are nominated for appointments, appointments generally, whether ministerial or otherwise, have this privilege of taking a bow and go. And as we have explained, this remains the position of this Senate, like the previous sessions of the Senate. We are not covering anyone by so doing. We are still going to scrutinize the submissions by those nominees. And of course, if there is anything that disqualifies a nominee, the fact that the nominee passed through the National Assembly chambers does not protect uh, that nominee from being disqualified. But so far, this tradition of the Senate is maintained. And I sustain your points of order. Leader of the Senate. Point of order, Basiru Ajibola. Distinguished. The chairman, order 1B, 1A and B, and order 3, Rule 2 of the order. My name is Dr. Ajibola Bashuru. I represent Osu Central. Yesterday, in addition to the point of order sustained, issue was raised as to whether the resolution of the committee of the whole house that the privilege in terms of confirmation hearing should be extended to six legislators. Reference was made to order three two yesterday to say that it does not extend to those in the state parliament. With respect, it's not a proper interpretation of order three rule two. With the indulgence of the chairman, I beg to read the paragraph two. Nomination of senators to serve as presiding officers and appointment of principal officers and other officers of the Senate or on, parliament, on any parliamentary delegations shall be in accordance with the ranking of senators in determining ranking the following order shall apply. Senators returning based on number of times we elected, senators who had been members of the House of Representatives, the senators elected as senators for the first time. Mr. Chairman, the essence of this provision clearly is as to ranking, as to nomination for the purpose of what is stated in Order 3, Rule 2. One, to serve as presiding officers and appointment of principal officers and other officers of the Senate or any parliamentary delegation. The stated rule of interpretation is expression unions as exclusion or terrors. The express, the express mention of one thing is to the exclusion of others. I would just say that there is no express provision on the issue of whether it can be extended to the speaker or not. And by other one, Mr. Chairman, in all cases, not provided for here and after, or by, senate, by sessional or other orders or practice of the Senate, the Senate shall by resolution regard this procedure. So the procedure that have been adopted in conducting this exercise to extend the privilege to other state legislators is well covered by the order of this, uh, uh, of this Senate. Thank you. Uh, distinguished, distinguished, distinguished colleagues, please, uh, we are not going to start debating on this thing. We, we have set a standard for ourselves. We are going through with our standards. There is no need for any debate. Actually, in order to resolve this problem, maybe at one particular time, this kind of thing may even be uh, put into our standing orders so that it's clearly spelled out. But for the purpose of this present exercise, we stand by what we started yesterday. But going forward, we will even make it clearer by putting it in our standing order so that everybody understands what it is. Leader of the Senate. Um, distinguished Senator Alashadura. You can address the Senate, please. The Senate President, who 
is sitting as our chairman today, principal officers of the Senate, my distinguished colleagues, both left and right. Uh, I have learned a lesson quickly that it is always easy to be there and somebody else to be here. But, Your Excellency, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to come before you having been nominated by Mr. President as a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I also wish to acknowledge the presence of my governor, the governor of Ondo State, Arakuni Uluwaroti Miakredolu, who uh, solidarized with me by coming to the uh, floor of the Senate with me, and my brothers who are also in the House of Representatives from Ondo State. I have copiously in my CV stated my bio data. It's a very small document, and I deliberately made it so, so that it will be easy for my colleagues to go through. I'm sure by the time you flip through in five, ten minutes, you will have seen who I am. I only want to use this opportunity to plead with my colleagues that there were some jobs that we started in the Eighth Senate, which were almost completed, uh, that is very dear and close to my heart, especially in the petroleum industry. We had the PIB, which had been on for almost 20 years, and in the Eighth Senate, we tried to split the PIB into four the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill, the Administration Bill, the Host Community and Impacted Bill, and the fourth one, which is very, very important, which is the one that will dictate how much money we are going to get in this country. We call it the Governance Bill. Please, and please, I will plead with Mr. President, and my distinguished colleagues, that this, especially the PIGB had been passed, but it, it, it has not been assented to by Mr. President. Please revisit this bill for the good of Nigeria. It is very, very important for Nigeria to move forward and earn more from the natural resource of crude oil that God had given to us. There is also another bill that we had done to uh, second reading. We, 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 we had even conducted a public hearing on it, the Nigerian Nuclear Regulatory uh, Agency Bill. Everybody knows that the world has moved from crude to clean energy and other things. This one is very important for our nation, and the bill should, even, uh, should also be completed. I want to say all those, uh, Mr. President and Chairman, I wish to thank you once again for giving me the opportunity to stand before you and let you know that everything about me is before you and I will be ready to answer questions if need be. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, distinguished uh, colleagues, we recall that we also uh, agreed on the standard procedure, when we have our former colleagues nominated on the screen here. The two leaders of the Senate will normally talk on our behalf. So I'll start with Minority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President, sitting as the chair. My name is Enaya Baribe. I represent Abia South. And by the grace of God, Minority Leader. Tayo Alasodura is a good man, our good friend. 
Thank God that after having told us the work that you have done on the governance bill, part of the PIB that the Eighth Senate worked very, difficult, uh, very hard on, that it was not assented to. Not our fault, we did our job. Now you're on the other side. So we will expect you to make sure that you convince your colleagues in the executive that we didn't mean any harm in making sure that the petroleum sector of Nigeria that gives us all the revenues that we sit on today, that this reform is taken very seriously by the executive. Being there, we are sure that you are going to be a good ambassador of this chamber. And we we'll look forward to working very closely with you. We don't know whether they are going to put you in that uh, sector, but whichever sector or whichever place that they put you, don't be like the ministers who are very good to come and uh, call all of us now and would not take calls even from Senate leaders when they become minister. We know you are not that way because we have interacted with you here and you are a part and parcel of us. And so we do not have any hesitation in going ahead to say represent us very well when you get there. Thank you. Senate Leader. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, distinguished colleagues, uh, I would like to support the position that has been expressed very clearly by the minority leader. Uh, 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 his choice by Mr. President into the executive of this administration. I think it's a very, very good one. I didn't know him before, but we spent four years together on the, uh, the upper deck you know, of this chamber. And I know during a lot of deliberations, you know, uh, during, during a lot of the deliberations uh, on most issues, uh, Tayo Alessandra has been a great confidant to me. And a lot of the ideas, you know, sometimes very critical ideas about certain issues we share together. Uh, we exchange views and opinions of most issues that come before this Senate. And I find his counsel and his uh, temperament on a lot of issues as gentlemanly and always reassuring. I know he has passion for the petroleum industry and the reforms in that sector. And he really led the position that brought very, this very intractable reform process into four separate bills so that we can be able to address you know, the petroleum industry reforms in a much more consensual and convivial way. <clears throat> Having participated together with him in all those efforts, because I was part and passing of all the effort that was made in passing these bills, we realized, sir, that is a very good opportunity that now that you are going to work on the other side, even if you are not taken to the petroleum industry, at the Federal Executive Council level, you will bring your knowledge and experience of the hard work that we did on these petroleum reform issues before the Federal Executive Council, that if possible, the kind of snacks that prevented the passage of the governance aspect of that bill you know, be sent back to us with the same kind of conclusions that we have reached. We really went through this thing for four years. We worked on it very thoroughly. You know, so that it can come out as an executive bill and be presented to the Senate for easy passage. Because the kind of hard work that has gone through that bill and its consideration should not be lost. And I think your presence at the Executive Council will be able to help us revive 
you know, that kind of hard work that we have done so that it comes to fruition for the benefit of all Nigerians. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, knowing that Adachi Dura and, uh, is a very thorough and, uh, you know, high, very disciplined legislator, I know it's going to be a credit to this administration that such a person to be brought to the other side of governance. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, I plead with you and recommend that you allow Mr. Tayo, Senator Tayo, Alessio Dura to take a bow and leave the chamber. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much, uh, our leaders. Um, before you take a bow, uh, let me re echo what the two leaders have said. When you held sway here, you are a very committed uh, senator. You chaired the Senate Committee on Petroleum Upstream, and you did extremely well. You worked so hard, uh, especially for the PIGB. Or PIB generally split into about four segments. It was our desire and hope that the bills could be passed and assented to, but uh, that didn't happen. Let me give a small story of how the transition of this petroleum industry bill has been. In 2007, when I came to the Senate, in the Sixth Senate, this bill was sent to the Senate and the National Assembly, and then it took a life of its own. We ended up with so many versions of the bill, and we didn't even know which was which. It was a struggle to find the genuine uh, bill from the executive arm of government at that time. In the Seventh Senate, it came, and it was not concluded by the National Assembly itself. In the Eighth Senate, the National Assembly took the initiative to, pre to split that one bill into about four. And we passed the PIGB, and of course, there were some issues. In this narration, there is, it's clear that there were efforts, disparate efforts by the executive in the first instance, in the sixth and the seventh Senate a solo sort of effort. And then in the Eighth Senate, there was a solo effort by the National Assembly, and all failed. The option we have today is for the executive and the legislature to come together and look at how to go about this business of the PI, PIB. Because since we tried individually and we failed, I think the time has come for us to sit together, work out either one petroleum industry bill or separate bills, but doing it together will give better chance of having a bill or bills that will be worked on by the National Assembly and assented to by the executive. As soon as our committees are constituted, the petroleum-related committees will swing into action because I think we have all the materials that we need right from 2007 when we entered here up to the last day of the 2015, the Air Senate. All the materials are there. All we require is to have that synergy so that we're able to come up with something that will provide to us more revenues, but also support and encourage and sustain investments through reasonable profits by those in, in the business of petrol. So, let me also say that it's not a mistake that we have about seven or eight former members of the National Assembly going to the cabinet. That to us is a clear message that that Federal Executive Council is supposed to be and should be and ought to be an, an executive council that will always understand what the National Assembly is doing. Because we have all the representation, you are very well qualified people, committed people. And in fact, 
is a mixture of young and fairly old. No, no there's no very old. <laughs> Senator Lashadora is only 71 years old. I, uh, sorry, how old are you? 69. 69, sorry. That's not 69. old. 69 is not old. He's just beginning to get there. So we, we have very good representation. So we want to urge you, just like our leader said, that you represent us there well. Give the message, you know our sentiments very well, you know what we want for us to function very well, and we are prepared to function very well. So with this, I want to put the question, those in favor that he takes a bow and go, say aye. Those against say nay, the eyes have it. The soon senator can take a bow. tradition that the Senate adopt, adopted yesterday for former parliamentarians to take a bow and leave is actually the same thing that played out today. Senator Alash Andorra has been accorded that privilege. Well, but before then, uh, Senator Bashir Rajivali, they raised, raised point of order. You know, going back to that issue that the public needs to be enlightened on why the Senate takes uh, this particular uh, stance on the issue of allowing former parliamentarians to bow and leave, citing order, order three in the Senate standing orders, you know, which really defines what ranking means in the Senate. But then the 